Uh, in this example of recursive method, starting from the main method, we have to call a method named countdown and we will send a number 3. Countdown is a method that will take an integer num and it's a void method. So this is uh, 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 this method is different than the previous methods we do we did. In the previous method, always we have a return. So for example, in the previous method, we have some digit that will, will it will return an integer representing the summation of the digit. Uh, and the, uh, the one we did also the first example was fact. It will take a number and it will return an integer representing the factorial. Now here we have a method that is avoid method, so we expect no return, but we will do the output inside the method. It says here if num is less than or equal to zero, you have to print line nothing. So it's more like you have to print only a new line, but we will not do any output. And then else, you have to do the output of num. So for example, if you start here num as a three, you will output a three. And then you will have to call your method by sending num minus one. And this is the general case. Here I have to go back to my countdown. I will change the value of num. I will print it. I will go back. I will change the value of num printed until we reach the end, which is zero. So here we have an example of countdown as a three. So we will start countdown as a three. We will call our method and we will check the value of the three. Is it zero? It's not. So I will go to the else part and the else part it says do the output of num. So we will do the output of the first number which is three and then we will call the method and we will send num minus one. Current value of num is a three, three minus one will be two. So I will call my method again and I will send the value as two. Again I have to check did we reach zero? We didn't. So that I have to go to the else and the else part I have to do two things. I have to output the value of num. The current value of num is two. So the second output we will have as two. And I have to call the method and I have to change the value of num. So we will continue and the value of num will be one. Again, you have to check is it the base case, which is not. I have to go to the else part. In the else part, I have to output the current value of num, which is one. So this is the output one. And then you have to call your method by saying num minus one. You will call the method and you will send num minus one, which you will reach zero. If you reach zero, this is the end. And this is, will be the end where you have to do a print line. Now, this is the last call of your method. This is the base case. When you finish, you have to go again one step back, just like the examples we did before. So when I go back, I will go there. I have no more steps to be done because we finished the output and the calling method. Again, I will go to the previous call, nothing more to be done. We will go to the previous call, nothing to be done, and then we will go to the main. So the output we have, we have three, two, one. So we have the number just like counting down. The number, the first number is a three and then minus one, two, and then minus one is one till we reach zero and this is the end. So here the base case is if you reach zero, you need to do nothing. This is the end. That's why we just say output a print line. If this is not the end, what do you need to do? You have to do two things. You have to print the number and then you have to continue. So if my number is a three, I have to print the number and I have to go to the next number. And how to go to the next number by saying num minus one. Call the method and send num minus one. So I will reach two. When I reach two, I will say, do the printing of two and go to the next number, minus one, so it will be one. Print the one and go to the next number. When I go to the next number, which is zero, this is, will be the end. And we have nothing more to be done. And then when we go back, this is, will be the output as a three, two, and one. So here, if you have your, your method as a void method, we don't expect any return. We expect the output will be within the method. And we have the statement that says, do the output and then call your method. So whatever the number we have, we just print it, and then we continue with the calling. Once we finish, we have to go back. We will not. We will go now and do the opposite thing. In the, the example that we will, will come later, I will 
take the calling to the beginning and then I will do the output. So I will call, I will keep calling my method and then I will do the output and we will see what is the difference. Are we going to get the same output which is 3, 2, 1 or the output will be different? So here, this is the second example. It says here, you have to call the method countdown and you, countdown and you will have to send the three. Uh, you will take your number. And again, the method is void. If the number is less than zero, this is the end and you have to print nothing. So this is, will be the end. But if it is not zero, if it is a three, for example, you have to do two things. The first thing is you have to call the method once you finish you have to output the number. So it's the opposite of the previous version. So let's do the starting from the main and then we will see how can we do this. So from the main method, I have to call my method which is countdown and I will send the three. So I will call my method and the first value of num will be as a three. It's not the base case, so I will go to the else part, and the else part, it's mentioned like this. You have to call the method countdown, and you have to send n minus one, which is two, and then you have to do system.out.print line, the value of num. Now, because I have two statements, always we have to execute the first one. Once we finish, we have to execute the second one. And the first statement, it says, you have to call a method so it means i have to call a method and i will send the value of num as two here the value of num is two is it zero it's not i will have to go to the else and again i have to repeat the same process i will call my method count down and i have to send num minus one two minus one is one and then once i finish i will have to do the output of the value of num so because the call is coming first, it means I have to do the calling first. So I will come there and this is the value of num here will be as, as one. If the value of num is one, again, I have to check is it zero, it's not. I have to go to the else part. and the else part, you have to call your method, count down, and you will send num minus one, one minus one, zero. When you finish, you have to say system.out.print line num. And then you will need to call the method and you will reach the value of num as zero. When you reach the value of num as zero, you will need to print line and this is, will be the end. Now you have to, to, to do the tracing by going back to the calling to the previous call. So we are done here. I have to go to the previous call. So I'm done with the call. Now what is my next job is to do the output. So I have to do the output of num. Now to do the output of num, always remember you have to think about your current call. So this is my current call and the value of num is one. So when I do the output of num, I will do the output as one. So the first output we will have as one. We are done with the system.out. So we will go to the previous one. We are done with the call. And then you have to do the output of num, which is two. So this says two. And then you have to go to the previous one and then do the output again of num, which is currently as a three. So we have it as a three and then we will go back to the main. So in the previous version, it was output three, two, one. In this version, we did the output of one, two and three. So we have the opposite output. Uh, and the idea of this, it depends do you call first or do you have to do the output first? So the idea here in this example, it works like this. It says here, you have to take your number. So for example, my number is a three. Here I have to call and then when I come back, I have to do the output. So it means do not do the output of a three now. You have to go to the next number, which is two. And then again, go to the next number, which is one and then continue till you reach zero. When you reach zero, now this is the end, and then you have to go back. When you go back, you say, go back to the previous one, do the output. So the first one output, I'll have it as one. And then go back and do the output of two. So this is two. Go 
back and do the output of a three so the output will be as a three so I'm going and I will not do the output till I come back and that's why the first output will be the last number we found uh, in the previous one it was you do the, f the output first so in the previous one we did the following we say you have a three do the output and then continue and then do the output of two and continue do the output of one and continue and then when you finish you just go back but you have nothing to be done and this is will be your output then uh, this idea of void method do we need to do the output first or do we need to do the calling first uh, is a common, uh, is a common uh, concept that always comes with recursion. So if you need to do your output at the beginning, then you have to say system.out before you call. If you need to do the output later on, so you have to call first and then you have to do the output. 